Antarctica is an eternal ice desert, but in terms of area it is the fifth largest continent, ahead of Europe and Australia. About 98% of Antarctica is covered by ice 1.6 kilometers thick on average, which is why there is hardly a place more hostile to life. However, this did not prevent seafarers from various countries from sailing there after its discovery in 1820 and claiming parts of it for their motherland. However, in order to create a peaceful coexistence there and to keep Antarctica open for explorers of all nations, the Antarctic Treaty was signed by 12 countries in 1959, which stipulated the peaceful use of Antarctica. But why do seven states nevertheless continue to lay claim to both large and small areas of Antarctica? And what does the future hold for Antarctica as the ice melts and seemingly endless reserves of raw materials are exposed? Will there be a battle for Antarctica? The myth of a vast continent in the south of the world has persisted since ancient times. It was assumed that there must be an enormous landmass to counterbalance the land masses of the northern hemisphere. Thus, the first explorers believed to have found a part of this continent with South America and Australia. However, when this turned out to be wrong, the explorers went further and further south in search of the lost continent. The first person to cross the Arctic Circle was probably James Cook, who crossed it in 1773, but did not reach Antarctica because of pack ice. It said about it, I can boldly say that no man will ever venture farther than I, and that the lands which may lie to the south will never be explored. But only a few decades later, his statement turned out to be false. The title of the first man to actually set eyes on Antarctica was claimed by three sailors. Once the captain of the Russian Imperial Navy Fabian Gottlieb von Bellingshausen, Edward Bransfield, a captain of the British Navy, and Nathaniel Palmer, an American sealift. All three reached Antarctica independently in 1820 in a period of a few weeks. However, Fabian Gottlieb von Bellingshausen was probably the first of the three. However, it would be almost 100 years before anyone actually reached the South Pole. In 1910, a race broke out between the Norwegian Roald Amundsen, who was also the first person to cross the Northwest Passage completely by ship, and the British Falcon Scott, who had already come very close to the South Pole through several Antarctic expeditions. A dramatic race ensued, but in the end it was the Norwegian Amundsen who was the first to make the long crossing of Antarctica to the South Pole. Scott and his entire team, on the other hand, died on their return to their ship, their frozen bodies later found in tents. It is indeed a very exciting and dramatic story. Feel free to write in the comments if you want to see a video about it. After that, more and more countries began to declare territorial claims to Antarctica. The first to do so were, as so often, the British, who declared the Antarctic Territory south of the Falkland Islands and South Georgia to be British. New Zealand, France, Norway, Australia, Argentina, and Chile followed. Until 1946, only one sector remained independent. Under pressure from the USA, the Soviet Union, and other countries, however, the territorial claims were declared null and void and negotiations began over Antarctica. Thus, at the Antarctic Conference in 1959, the Antarctic Treaty was signed by 12 countries, resulting in a peaceful solution. The treaty stipulated that Antarctica could only be used for scientific research and that any military activities on the continent were prohibited. Even though the territorial claims were thus off the table for the time being, they continued to be made officially by those seven countries, they were just frozen for the time being, so to speak. However, it has been forbidden for new countries to make territorial claims. It remains to be seen, however, how the further situation will develop. The treaty is initially valid until 2048, which is not that long away. Then it could be renegotiated, especially due to climate change and the discovery of numerous raw materials. Antarctica will certainly play a central geopolitical role in the second half of the 21st century. For example, initial forecasts predict a huge amount of oil, coal, and precious metals such as gold and silver and diamonds in Antarctica. It will therefore depend on the global political situation in the coming decades whether a peaceful consensus can continue to be found for Antarctica or whether there will even be military conflicts over Antarctica, as was once the case in colonial times. China, in particular, is forging ahead, opening numerous bases and aiming to become one of the most important nations in Antarctica. And many non-signatories to the Antarctic Treaty reject the Antarctic status quo, seeing it as a Cold War geopolitical construct. Thus, many countries, even far-flung ones, are now building bases in Antarctica, initially for research purposes only, but also increasing those countries' influence on the continent. What do you think the future of Antarctica will look like? Will the different nations be able to get together again, or will economic and geopolitical ambitions prevail and Antarctica will be colonized in the coming decades?